Dime Davis is an Emmy nominee for Best Variety Sketch Series and Best Directing for a Variety Series this year for her work on a Black Lady Sketch Show, which makes her the first Black woman ever nominated for directing a Variety Series. Uh, I'm sure you've been asked about that a lot, but what was it like to get that nomination and, and sort of break that particular glass ceiling? Yeah, um, I mean, first of all, incredible, right? I think we, you know, we didn't really set out to be a um, Emmy nominated show, right? We just set out to kind of do something that had never been done before. And I think that was our focus. Um, so getting the news was like all the things, right? It was, it was overwhelming, it was cool, but mostly like the recognition for our work, I think was the most special thing, especially because we put everything we had into it. Um, so to be recognized, um, I think it's really special for us. And uh, I'm pretty sure you and, and Robin Thede and company are also the first a Black woman nominated for producing a variety series, uh, which, yeah. is, which is great in one sense, but also it, it, it goes to show how few Black women mm -hmm. get the sort of opportunities that, that you guys have gotten to make this particular show. Uh, like, it, it sort of reminds me of the Black lady courtroom sketch in the finale, mm -hmm. where ah. every, all the Black women are excited to see other Black women just there in the room with them. Is, is that sort of like mirrored by what it's like to work on the show? It's, oh my God. I mean, I feel like that is exactly what it's like to work on the show. It's really incredible. Um, and, you know, I think just the historicness of it all is really, um, it's really incredible, you know, but I feel like it's so bittersweet, you know what I mean? To kind of be in the position where um, we're nominated, the show is nominated, where I'm nominated for the first time ever, this is like a black woman has this nomination. It's it's cool, but it's also, man, wow, it, it really kind of, um, it's, there's a little sting with the, with the honey, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think working on the show, I mean, it was literally, it was the most freeing experience I've ever had, right? Because I'm working um, with my peers, I'm working with people who understand what we're doing, un understand kind of not only on a creative level, but kind of on a historic and cultural level, like what we're doing, you know? Um, and I think it's just like every day was, was bliss, you know? It was hell also, because it was very intense, right? Um, but there was kind of this element of us really knowing um, that we had something special on our hands and that we got to put our whole selves into it. It was really amazing. And one of the uh, the benefits of a, of a show like this, the, of a sketch comedy series like this, is you get to kind of play with, I mean, it's all comedy, but you're playing with a lot of different tropes and a lot of different genres. Uh, what, what is it kind of like to play in that sandbox as a director to have that many opportunities like of different styles and, and visuals and, and all that? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was dope. I mean, we really approached each sketch like a short film, right? So each, each piece had its own um, look, its own feel, its, its own kind of tone. Um, we were really specific in that. Um, and I think that's why the show has so much scope because we really did, despite the time, despite the money, we really put in kind of the creative effort to make something that we hadn't seen before. Um, I think that it's cool because sketch has um, typically been a place where you can turn some cameras on, um, put them on some, some performers and watch them do their thing. Um, and I think with this, we took a, a different approach. You know, we really, really um, went from a place of making each thing feel like it could stand on its own. I mean, there's, we pulled from Fincher, we pulled from um, even things like Crooklyn, places that, like movies that we really, really love, um, and created something um, that feels unique, but also, um, I don't know, there's sort of a um, elevation to the, to the genre a little bit, or just kind of like a um, pulling in other, other forms of art into this space, you know, and that was really cool. That was kind of the thing we set out to do. And uh, for your directing nominations, you're up uh, specifically for the episode uh, Born at Night But Not Last Night, which was the finale episode of, mm -hmm. of the first season. Uh, what made you choose that particular episode as, as uh, an example of, of your work for the show? Mm, I love that question. Um, I think because 
Well, it has a couple of my favorite sketches in it. I mean, we, we you mentioned one of them, Courtroom Kiki, which just is kind of quintessential of the magic of the show. Um, but then kind of on the other end, we have um, a sketch like um, Get the Belt, right? And if you look at those, they're so drastically different. And I think they encompass kind of the work we've done on the show. Like we made choices with court, Courtroom Kiki. It's, it's, you know, it's sort of a courtroom um, it takes place in a courtroom and it's a bunch of black women and they're like, oh my God, we're all like professional women working here. This is so much fun. Um, but but tonally, we also wanted to pull from stuff that we knew like Judge Judy, right? So that the we changed kind of the frame rate a little bit on that when it, the, the lights are kind of like bigger and harsher lights, right? And then um, the camera move is more like swinging kind of cameras, right? Opposed to something like at the belt where it's much more cinematic, right? Um, and even... Well, I I really love Get the Bell, by the way. <laughs> um, but even within that, we play with, with genre, right? You have something um, that's very narrative-driven, um, kind of soft, nostalgic kind of lighting in there. The camera moves are, are very um, intimate, right? Because that's kind of what we're doing there. But then also within that sketch, we totally take the... Um, the American gladiator and we pull them into our world right and like that was just so fun it's also nostalgic for me because I grew up like not as like a American gladiator fan but like I will be honest I was a wrestling fan and it totally gave me that energy and to be able to put all this kind of magic into this one show and particularly this one episode I thought it was a really good way to show off like you know the hard work that we put in to making the show and uh, another sketch that kind of runs through that episode and runs through the whole season is sort of the aftermath of, of the apocalypse, the events that sort of, you know, where the stars of, of the show are the last survivors on earth. Um, like, what was, what was shooting those like? Were those all shot together, you mm -hmm. know, at one time and then uh, sort of pieced throughout the season or, or what was that process? Yeah, totally. We shot it all together a few days and in a really dope house. Um, that was great because I think of everything, those are like the most kind of grounded pieces, right? It's like, um, Robin always say it's like a show within a show, which I thought was really cool. Um, and for me personally, I love that because especially towards the end when we're starting to like piece things together as the audience, I got to really kind of direct performances, um, which was really fun because, you know, in the other sketches you're directing performances, particularly not particularly, only for comedy, really, right? Um, and there's some, you know, there's some directing for kind of um, pulling out more character stuff. But in those, it was really all narrative and it was really kind of about storytelling. It was really about like the emotions of like, holy shit, like the world is, is, is coming to, is gone and we're the only survivors, right? And of course we didn't know we were foreshadowing what's happening now. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, 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 I think of everything I really enjoyed, especially those last few interstitials, I really, really enjoyed directing those because those felt like home for me. And, and those scenes you're directing really just the core cast and the rest of the show, you, you're, it's them and so many of these other like incredibly like high profile and yeah. accomplished guest stars, uh, including Angela Bassett, who's also nominated for the show. Um, What's it, what was it like getting to work with and getting so many people to do the show mm -hmm. and, and, and then to work with them over, over the course of these six episodes? Yeah, um, how do I, it, like surreal, really. I mean, I think, you know, Robin and Quinta have this joke about uh, Robin being a witch and being able to like pull all this off. I definitely feel like she, there's, she's a little witchy um, because, you know, I think that in, our careers as filmmakers, we think about um, the incredible talent that's out there and we dream of one day working with them, right? And I think we always think that is gonna be much down the road. Um, but what we were able to do is, for me particularly, they were able to like pull that much closer. So it was really, um, it was really fun, but also, you know, kind of intimidating because you have women like Angela Bassett, who is, I mean, iconic, right? Um, and, you know, I can't pretend that I wasn't a little, like, nervous stepping on that set that day, you know? I, I wouldn't lie to you about that. <laughs> um, and and th there's a, a loose-litness to the show, uh, you know, that feels very improvisational at times, but how much improvisation is there from episode to episode, sketch to sketch? Does it vary, or, like, mm -hmm. how much do you play around with it? 
Yeah, I mean, um, Robin and Lauren Ashley Smith, our head writer, were very um, particular about what they had written because it was so narrative uh, based. They wanted to make sure we got what was on the page. So the approach to that was just, um, we made sure, which is so incredible, like thinking about how we pulled this off is crazy because we didn't have a lot of time, you know, um, but we made sure we got what was there. Um, and then my job was to make sure, you know, the coverage was unique to each kind of piece, but also not so much, right, or so elaborate that I didn't leave room for um, several takes of just like, okay, cool, do what you want to do now, right? So it was really a mix. Um, and that was so fun because these women, they've been doing comedy for, you know, since birth, you know? So like, it was really fun to, for me to set up an environment where we could do both, where we could have something that was focused and narrative and really storytelling driven, but also loose and fun and like giving them opportunities to kind of do their thing. It was really cool. And one of the things that is so pivotal to like, at least for the audience to get into these characters, and I'm, I'm sure the actors as well, is the makeup and hairstyling is just so yeah. intense in places and so on point. Like, the, 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 how, how is it working with that? And, and just, it, it looks very elaborate, but also very natural. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, it is very elaborate. I think what I love about the show is like, you get the title, a Black Lady Sketch Show, right? And you kind of think you know what that's gonna be. And then you jump into the show and it's not at all what you expected, right? But what you do expect is some cool hairstyles. And I think we totally nailed that. Um, and I thought it was, it was great because I, I mean, A, these women played, I mean, hundreds of characters. I mean, it's, it's, it's so many characters. They all kind of like did. And really differentiating those was super important to us. Um, and really the, the hair uh, and makeup team, they worked overdrive because we, again, we did approach each thing like a short film. So you had to change hair, you had to change makeup for everything for it to all work cohesively. So it was really fun. I mean, there's some days I was like, what? You know, people will walk out and you're like, wait, I, I know we talked about this, but this is like so much more cool than I thought it could ever be, you know? So it was, that was one, of high, that was a highlight for sure. I love that you brought that up. And, and there are some sketches also that, that sort of have a dark edge to them, uh, like not just the mm. apocalypse sketches, which obviously is the end of the world, but you know, the black owned restaurant is, is really purgatory. And mm -hmm. what's it like bringing in some of those kind of like dark edges to the comedy? Oh my God, I loved it. I loved it so much. You know, I don't come from the uh, sketch world. So I was a little, um, I was like, how are we gonna, how are we gonna do this, right? How are we gonna like tonally pull these things out? And for me, it was really about leaning into those genres, like all the way, like leaning into the point of like almost absurdity, right? Cause that's kind of where, where the joke is. So like, um, it's not in this episode, but one of the, one of the sketches that I also love is called Killing It. And it is totally, I totally pulled from like panic room and like more venture work and like, it's, there's like an eeriness to it, but you're so like, this is weird because I'm, I'm laughing too. It, it was really, really fun to like pull all that together. And also I don't, you know, going back to kind of like the historical nature of this show, um, giving me an opportunity to really flex those muscles was really cool because, you know, I, I don't necessarily lean into those genres, but like it was cool to pull it all in and do it for this for sure. Yeah, and, and you have worked in, in multiple uh, different genres, you know, comedy, mm. drama. Uh, is there any particular that, that you feel most at home in, in directing a particular style or has this show kind of just kind of blown mm. that wide open? Yeah, that's, I love that question because before doing this show, I honestly never, I never thought I'd be doing sketch, right? Um, and even when Robin first reached out, I was like, mm, I don't know about this, you know, but we talked, um, and it was so, her vision for the show was so incredible that I was like, I have to do this. Like, I have to be a part of it, right? Um, and so for me, while before it was definitely much more narrative driven, um, I think that I really just used what I do as a filmmaker, which to me is like, what is the material? My job is to kind of like pull that out, right? Um, so I think I got to play a little bit more than I normally would, but at the end of the day, I feel like it's all the same principles, right? I just had to make sure that 
with with st telling the story i also had to make sure i supported the funny and i just kept those two things like at the forefront and like it all just kind of worked out and uh, the show was renewed for a second season uh but mm -hmm. of course that was before the the, the apocalypse actually happened uh, yeah like, what, what was the status of it was it the writing in progress was any filming already been done or or what, what can you say if, if anything about the status of that yeah no um second season was they were about to shoot second season i think just a few days out and then of course you know the world kind of ended and then now we're here trying to figure it out um but yeah i think the production is gonna jump back in right right after well right after i don't even know when that is right but i think people are moving towards productions for sure i'm hearing more and more about like people moving towards that and we will see what happens because it's a very weird time yeah. do you imagine that uh the pandemic might kind of factor into any of the uh any of the show now uh when, whenever it comes back to to shoot robin has definitely said um <laughs> that season two will be even weirder than season one so i can only imagine you know and at the end of season one we get um you know we think that these are the only women left on earth right and then there's a there's a, a ding dong so I, absolutely i think that the audiences should prepare for like some weird crazy stuff happening in season two definitely well, I want to congratulate you again on your Emmy nominations this year, um, and fingers crossed for when we can get more Black Lady Sketch Show in the works. Uh, yes. And, and thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me. I've, I've really enjoyed this. This has been dope.